Hello, my name is Chuby. I'm Vanessa. And welcome to No Filters, No Fears no podcast. podcast. <laughs> I want to let you know that today's episode is a level four. Level four. And don't worry if you cannot watch it live or you don't want to watch it live right now, you can always check us out on Wednesday when we post it to our YouTube. And remember, you can catch us on Spotify, uh, iTunes, Anchor, Instagram. You can see a little snippet on our Instagram and on Facebook. Guys, how are you all doing? We're going to give everybody a chance to like filter in. You know, we started a little bit later. We wanted to build the anticipation. <laughs> They like filter in, no pun intended. Yeah. So. Well, guys, you know what today is all about? It's about the stone wall rising, uprising. Wow. <laughs> it's one of those days. It, but it's those days. Um, it's I mean, people, it's it's the stone wall riots, but uprising riots. makes it, it gives it a more po positive connotation. But in reality, people were mad, and it was a riot. It's. It was a total riot. And as you know, this week, you know, it's that week. Yesterday, actually, it started, you know, early mornings, yeah. you know, there was a riot. There was riots happening. Absolutely. And I mean, it, it's, it's crazy because right now, so many things are, are, are happening at once. So much awareness to so many communities being feeling um, separated. And it's not new, right? None of these realizations are new, but it's becoming more aware to people that were like this. Kind of seeing it, but kind of not. Now it's like you have no choice. So um, it being Pride Month and it, Pride Month culminating, this is a perfect way to round it out. Um, you know, to bring awareness to the importance of the Stonewall rising, the Stonewall riots, and what it did for the LGBTQ community. And like every episode of ours before, none of it stands alone. They're all connected in one way or another, whether you're uh, a part of the LGBTQ, uh, LGBTQ community, Black Lives Matter, like all of us are connected in one way or another. These themes are important. These, these mo movements are important and being active in each one of them and knowing their history and what they did and what the progress has been and where it still needs to go is important. We all need to know where, how we're standing here today with the rights that we do have. Well, Absolutely. you know, limited, but still we have, yeah. them. we yeah. have them. There's always gonna be a pioneer out there, somebody that started this. And I think, uh, Chuby, you have a lot of details about the history of Stonewall. Uh, for those of you who don't know, <laughs> um, because there's a lot of people that don't know, surprisingly. I talked to some friends that are of the LGBTQ community that didn't know what Stonewall was. And I was like, child, know your history, <laughs> you know? So the Stonewall Inn was a gay club in New York City but it became so much more. Right, it was located in the Greenwich Village, to be yeah, exact. Yeah. Greenwich on Village is one of my favorite places in New York, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> it was located in the Christopher Street, where exactly where the riot, um, where it all began, where it all started. Mm -hmm. And it was six days of protests. Yep. Of of violence, you could say, because it really was okay. between the police and the everybody around there. So it was six days yeah. of of this. And there was a lot leading up to it. I mean, this was a time where it was illegal. You could mm -hmm. not, uh, same-sex couples could not hold hands, hands in public. In public. And we're talking about whole hands. Uh, in public, they couldn't uh, kiss. You know, it could not be known that you were homosexual. You would lose your job you would um Literally go to jail if they catch you you would go to jail so there was a lot of terrible things happening you know at one point like I, I was looking up that there was only one state that it actually became legal and it wasn't even like i don't even know how to phrase it i read it and i had to reread it a couple of times because i was like how would you know why does it 
matter to you. But in Illinois was the only state where it was legal to have sexual um, relations, relations like consensually of the same sex. And I'm like, but why does that what happened in anybody's bedroom your problem? <laughs> why is that your problem? But it was only in that one state. And in seven states, it was legal to castrate a man for being gay. So th these are the things that were happening in the world. And it took, I, I, no, this is my bad for not properly preparing this bit of information, but it was for a long time recognized by the American Psychiatric, uh, yeah, Psychiatric uh, Association that homosexuality was a mental illness. And they finally let that go. And even then, when there was a panel of professional psychiatrists speaking on the matter, right, and saying how it's not a mental illness and onward, there was one homosexual psychiatrist on that panel and he had to wear a mask to cover his face and use a microphone that had a voice altering uh, effect because he feared for his life and his safety. Um, I feel we've come a ways from that, but there's still so many terrible things that happen that unless you look for it, you won't find. And that even that is kind of sad and scary that you have to dig for uh, stories like this to make sure that you are educated in what's happening in the world around you. It is scary. And that's the thing. These are the things that we are not, we don't get taught this anywhere. Mm -hmm. Like it is whitewashed or it's just simply not mentioned. And if, like you said, we do not get educated on it, like you said, nobody knew knows or what Stonewall, you know, was or is, and you know, yeah, yeah. tough time. And, and Stonewall was significant for so many reasons, and nobody is saying that they condone violence or anything, but it comes a point. It came a point for those that um, initiated the riots that went out and said enough that it was the only solution. It, it was the only like, how do you get, take some of that, some of that anger that you had inside of you without getting violent? And and the thing is that, so last year I was invited to perform uh, in the 50th anniversary uh tribute that they did, that um, our night out did for the Stonewall riots. And our monologues were composed from actual words spoken by Stonewall veterans. And reading that script was so difficult without crying and falling apart and imagining how people could, how anyone could do this to another human being, right? And it was, and as a woman, reading what would happen to other women, you know, during that time, it was difficult, you know, um, just because you don't identify or uh, associate in the same way doesn't mean that you cannot empathize with what that must feel like. You know, women deal with sexual harassment frequently, you know, so, but this was next level. This was, uh, people at bar, men in bars or police officers grabbing a lesbian out of a bar and manhandling her and saying, you wanna show me how man you are, how manly you are, how masculine you are. Um, it was never in order to, you know, insult anyone's sexuality or manhood, but it was taken as such and it was taken out on people in a very horrendous way. And on the night of June 20. 8th or the early morning of June 28th, uh, they had enough and enough is enough. And it also funny because I remember when I when I did this performance, um, one of the things that stood out was in the conversation, there was uh, two brilliant actors, Larry Buzio and Joey Posada, who performed with me. And I remember them talking about how, you know, drag queens, even within the gay community, um, th there was kind of like a disconnect that like, uh, why do they have to look like that? Why do they have to dress? Why do they have to be so extra? But drag queens were the ones who started the whole thing and said, that's it, <laughs> right? And, and furthermore, uh, uh, black drag queens and, and trans um, 
women were out there like, excuse me, enough and starting making sure that people heard them. So it's when even within the LGBTQ community, there was more unity even amongst uh, them, you know, because you couldn't really talk to each other. It was, that's a scary thing. It's like right now, me, now I can't be friends with Chubby because we both have long hair, <laughs> right? And so we have to like kind of stay away because if not, they'll, right. notice, they'll notice. It's it's a, it's a little crazy. And that's why the Stonewall Inn to most of the transgender community, you know, and the rest of the LGBTQ community was home for them. Some went there since it was illegal to hold hands somewhere else. Yeah, they would okay. go in there. They were, you know, just there, there were tips. They had tips. Like I read so much when I had to do the performance, and like now when we're prepping for this, I they had so many tips on how to like get themselves ready. So it's like if the lights came on, they knew to like sit right. back. They knew that there was a raid happening, and the, the gay clubs were run by the mafia, right? right. But the mafia paid off the police to keep them off their trail, right? But still the police would do these raids, but they wouldn't close them down because they were getting paid by the mafia. So it was this whole push the cycle among that, those circles. But this final raid, and I'm, I'm talking about even people from the, from the community, it was like 40 at a time would go out walking the streets looking at, at night and they were like called the morality police. And they would throw people in, in trucks and take them to jail. And Stonewall riots started at the same day. And I remember in, in one of the one of the one of the monologues that they shared to us, they're like, we don't know if it was because we were all still in mourning for Judy Garland, somebody who was a massive supporter of the LGBTQ community. Um, she passed away and her funeral was on the day that the riots began they were in that process and then on top of that they were trying to just be themselves and have their moment and then the police came in it's like one thing after another and that was it and uh, as one of the people that were taking into the vans there were like these paddy wagons that would take away um those that were arrested she looked back and said aren't you going to do anything to the crowd oh and that's where we did something. <laughs> and that's where everything started. That's yeah. where hell broke loose, you could say. But yeah. it, it was about time because how long can you take the same things over and over, these these senseless raids over and over? You're still human. Yeah, so and because it was so much time. more than the raids. Right. And, and it, it's about time, you know, that you that it finally happened. It was about time it happened, you know? I mean, obviously I'm standing from the privileged side of like everything now, but for for everybody that went through that, obviously I, it was hard. I hope you guys saw our video that we posted earlier from the veterans from Stonewall, some of the, you know, survivors. No, well, but we can't even say survivors because fortunately no one no one died, but right, right, right. They're absolutely, absolutely veterans. And um, I remember in one of the most impactful things from that Stonewall performance that I was a part of was the Fort Lauderdale Gaiman's chorus performs, and they are outstanding. And during the rehearsal, so many of them got emotional. There are a lot of older gentlemen that are on you know are part of the chorus and they lived that time not maybe not necessarily the riots but they lived being persecuted you know for wanting to love the way that was you know that the way they needed to that way they felt and um they were very emotional and they were singing over the rainbow which again judy garland so they were very emotional and I got emotional. Everybody in the room, gay, straight, trans, white, black, purple, like it didn't matter, it, it, it touched you because to see another person being able to live their truth and know how much, how long it took them. Like these are older men who had to wait so long 
to be able to hold hands with partners that they'd been with for 10, 20 years. And they, and they just couldn't. How, how, how terrible. So the Stonewall, uh, up, the Stonewall Uprising, the Stonewall Riots were a significant change in that now they didn't have to hide and they were able to protest. And this was at the same time that now, you know, the Black Panthers were doing the parades. Uh, 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 women's liberation was on the rise and very vocal. So now that there was not really a voice for the LGBTQ community until the riots. And that's why we have them today. I yeah, mean the, the, pride, the Pride Parade came from that. Exactly. Right? It started as a march from Christopher Street to Central Park. And that became now the big parade that you see and now that every city has their thing. And it's not, I think, um, who was it? Was it a video that you shared with me? Or was it somebody that said it wasn't, we're, they don't do the pride parades because it's a party uh, yeah. to celebrate and just show off. It's because it's a celebration of being able to be seen. Yeah. You know? And I mean, that's the thing that people in the LGBT community argue a lot that I've read that some people take it as a party or they take it like it means nothing or they don't understand why the parade is happening or why people get upset, why they miss the parade. You know, like this year, a lot of us like, you know, who wanted to go to the parade were either sad about it, they, you know, because they wanted to go and most understood why it was important. You know, it's important to 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 walk the parade, you know. And by the way, if you're asking, if you're wondering what the crawl says, uh, we want to in, in talking about this history and the importance of it and what the, the changes that it brought about, uh, you know, it's important to know that there are where you can go and find out more information. There's still exhibits, I believe, going on right now um, at the Stonewall Museum, the Stonewall Archives in Fort Lauderdale, um, which is a huge deal. They were massive, excuse me. <laughs> they were super supportive during last year's anniversary tribute. And there, that's where we got the information. That's where we got the interviews. And we got to hear and watch these interviews with these veterans and it was, and I could hear, it was very interesting to be able to see the faces of the women I was portraying and know that they, the things that I was saying, they lived. This was the to check them out, see who they are, what information. Um, does it matter if you're by whatever information <laughs> is good? You know, being educated about multiple walks of life is important. Uh, the uh, organization is the Gay and Lesbian. Oh my God, I can't remember your names. My brain is stopping for everything. But the below, please go check them out. And if you have any other links you guys know about, if you guys, um, you know, could share it with us, you know, leave a comment, you know, we'll be very grateful for it. And we'll share it as well, you know, when the video is uploaded for everybody else to see so they could go check it out as well. So um, I'm gonna share the two pioneers that, you know, they were through the Stonewall uh, riots. One of the pioneers, her name was Marsha P. Johnson. She was an activist and a self-identified uh, drag queen she was one of the many um, cause main ones, Marsha Johnson and Sylvia Rivera, that they led the LGBTQ um, par parades and they, you know, stood up for rights that we have today. They march day in and day out and they continue their support to, to get us the rights that we had today, you know, like, Obviously, doing petitions, marching, doing this, and oh God, 
the, it, 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 reading it, it got me thinking because it's, it was so much work that these two ladies put into it. Obviously, there were many more, but it was like an exhausting day in and day out of doing, you know, speeches and, and trying to get a crowd to settle and not go right. crazy at times. Yeah. And I mean, uh, Stor I'm going to, I'm not great with last names, y'all, but Stormy Delab Delavrier. I, I hope I said that right, uh, was a civil rights activist and she was a legendary part of the Stonewall uh, riots. Wow. She is the one, the, the, she was a lesbian woman that was at the bar that night that when it got raided was being thrown into the paddy wagon and said, S aren't somebody do something or isn't someone going to do something? And that's when everybody said, let's go. I mean, it started inside the bar. This right. is what being thrown inside the paddy wagon that night um, and nobody knows and whoever this person is in their hearts they know that they started this uh, this shift for their community uh, a drag queen took off her shoe <laughs> and smacked the police officer <laughs> who, were, who was you know because they were close to the she was close to the door when they were coming in and uh, she was being arrested she's like no honey not today and then Stormy Delavre started. And then from there, um, like you said, Marsha P. Johnson, which they have a really great um, uh, documentary about, the, and they have it phrased like this, the death and life, so it's backwards, the death and life of Marsha P. Johnson. It's on Netflix right now. Um, and her life was, yeah, because they don't know how, her her death is a, is a mystery. They claim, suicide but most people myself included are convinced that it was murder especially when at that time you know the the transgender and the drag queens and the lgbt community were getting murdered and there was yep. nothing being done about it there was literally mm -hmm. nothing being done about it they will always say it was suicide and mm -hmm these are things that need needs to get to the bottom of things we need to this needs to change yeah. i think uh, obviously within laws that need to be changed and we all know yeah a lot of that horrible thing that was passed recently that does not protect the trans community uh in the, like the healthcare system it, it it was taken away and that broke my heart because i mean i, I have a lot of trans friends and the process that journey is already so difficult on its own and not knowing that you're protected by those that are literally having your life in their hands that's scary um so it, it breaks my heart but it also makes me worried for my friends so we see so many laws that need to be changed so much awareness that needs to be brought to those things but also i think it's very beautiful that despite that, um, you know, and despite even the pandemic, there have been ways for the LGBT community, LGBTQ, y'all, there's the letters get long. There's a lot of letters, and every day there keep be more letters. So <laughs> my tongue is still getting used to it. Um, that, you know, they found a lot of ways virtually to be able to, to celebrate um this moment in history uh, of their of their community that to not lose the hope to to keep the eye on the prize you know that there's still room for growth and and um societal acceptance of of certain things but to see so i think for me being at that um stonewall tribute last year was a big eye opener to have in my face, I, you, you, we see them all the time. You know, you see it all the time, like these couples that have been together for 30, 40, 50 years, and you don't think about what their relationships were like at the beginning and what they had to go through. Um, because there are other couples, and I will just say like that, other couples don't really have to worry or think about those things. Um, but it's beautiful to see it, that love still prevails and that um, that even though times get hard and there's a lot of pushback, there are still 
people who find intelligent and positive ways to get the message across and make change happen. I mean, we've come a long way since then, but there's still more to go. Watch that, yes. You know what we were talking about the other day? The, the, the pictures, the black and white pictures versus yes. the color. So there's a meme floating around about how the pictures from, you know, the Selma March and so many things that happened during the civil rights movement, the peak of the civil rights movement, that all the photographs were black and white. No, this was a a, a thing done on purpose <laughs> to make it seem like it was such a long time ago. Like a distant time. But it wasn't. It wasn't. And the Stonewall right photographs and even the the footage that's kept right of the riots are, are black and white. And the reality is color photography existed. This was only 1969. Right? Okay. So it hasn't been so long. <laughs> And that's the thing we get, we let that fool us into thinking that, but when we do the history and then you actually read it and you're like, June 20th, 1969. And you're like. That was like yesterday. Well, not yesterday, 51 years ago to be exact. Right. But, you know, it's like, it makes it seem as though, oh, but that was so long ago. Like, get over it, get over it. Nene, it was five minutes ago. <laughs> right. And that's the thing, man. Like, I, I, I swear, like I keep telling you guys, reading is essential i know i say it a lot but it freaking is because if you do not do your research if you don't read if you don't look for things on your own if you do not do this you will be living under someone else's perception of what the world was when it wasn't really like that and we can't live like that we gotta live for for our own truth we gotta go look for it and we gotta go read it what because uh, uh, both of us were doing research, Chubi, for you, what is something that really impacted you on, on a human level, not like on an intellectual level or anything like that, but like you read it and it just punched you in the gut to know that something like this was ever even possible? To be honest with you, when they say it was illegal, like you will literally get go to jail. Like that, to me, I could not phantom that like i could not think like you're walking down the street and all of a sudden it's like you're getting detained and going to jail because you're holding someone else's hand of the same thing. that was it, it's just surreal to me like i couldn't believe it because it was so not so long ago 51 years ago it's right there so that to me was yeah. and what about you um I mean, for me, the one that really, I was torn. The reason I brought him up at the beginning was because I it really like the castration, that it was legal mm. to castrate a gay man, and also that it was considered a mental illness. Yeah, that, that one. Because, yeah. you know, I don't think I've ever met a gay person that I, that, that that's what makes them mentally ill. <laughs> You know, everybody's got other issues. We all got issues. We all traumatized for other reasons. But um, Damn, you know, man. A, a man having a, a boyfriend or a girl having a girlfriend ain't it, <laughs> you know? Um, that and also the outstanding number of bodies that were pulled from the Hudson River. That the numbers are, were I'm staggering. And that really like upset me. I'm like, ooh. Um, and please, guys, if you can share with us in the the chat. I mean, we see so much even nowadays. Like we're acting like it doesn't. It's not like Chubi and I are foreign to all the things that still occur. Look at all of um, the deaths that are right now uh, being called out during the Black Trans Lives Matter. Um, protests. So please, if 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 you know of things that still happen or things from knowing the history of the LGBTQ community that have hit you, and like I said, like we've talked about in every single episode, and Chubi, you we've talked about this as every single episode, certain themes recur where it's like none of these themes are for 
are just for one person. It's for every person, mm -hmm. every walk of life where you can, it resonates with you because you're a freaking human being and someone dying or being abused for no reason other than being different, one would hope it affects you. Uh, one would hope. One would hope. And that's uh, the thing that they forget that, that at the end they're human beings, they're still people mm -hmm. they still have the right to live they have the right to live their authentic selves without having to answer to anybody else mm -hmm. and we miss that well they miss that the people that have a problem with them miss that <laughs> um um we're hoping to bring uh you know get another interview going to, to post up for for you guys related to this excuse me i have hiccups now Get back to USA. Um, I, I don't want you guys to think like, yes, this is a serious topic, but Stonewall also led to very beautiful things, to very uh, um, happy moments, to people feeling more confident and more seen that they could share their truth. So whether, whether it's something that you've seen or something you want to share, please, well, they're yeah. um, listening and learning. Okay, and learning, listening Carter, and learning, learning. I'm so and glad. that that's because, I, like I said, we're gonna start recording our uh, meetings, our you know, our prep meetings, because we have so many conversations related to these things. We also have a lot of crying going on, because you know, as we research these things, you get emotional, man. Yeah, because the, for me personally, it's like, how the hell is this going on? And it's not just up then, it's just now, it's every day. Like every every morning, it's like you wake up and it's like a new freaking thing, a new someone else got killed, somebody else well, yeah, murdered. Like, yeah, somebody is just... And for the, and, uh, Brian, human rights affects us all, whether we are the ones being discriminated against or not. And it, it, it comes around. It, it is it's true, around. yeah, and that's but that's the thing what that people do not understand because since they live in their privilege, they think it doesn't. But the thing is, I don't know sometimes if it's necessarily privilege. It, it it's a lot of this is sometimes fear. Like it's not just oh, it doesn't affect me. I don't have to do anything. But it's like I want to. It, it affects me, but. There's a, a lot of stigma about around even being an ally, you know? So sometimes it can be scary to raise your voice um, in support of um, the same way that there's people who just want to be like Switzerland. Ni fu ni fa. I don't want to say I support. I don't want to say I don't. I just want to be here. Just let me be here. Like we said <laughs> in the last episode, it's true. Like if you... Um, some people are afraid of speaking up because then they don't want to be categorized as the same as the rest. Mm -hmm. Or, but if they don't, then they're still gonna get you know shit about it. So it's like I understand that, but like I said, like I feel like some people, like you said, they they're like it doesn't affect me, and that right. is their privilege. That is saying mm -hmm. that it doesn't affect them. They could turn off their phone and then they could go to sleep. Most people can't do that. Right. Most people can't because it's their life. Exactly, they live it every day. Yeah. Um, Daniel, this okay. reminded me of the movie Trap, the Alice Cooper story that I saw a piece on TV break at work. The fact that it happened in real life is crazy, but seeing how the world is nowadays, it's seeable, yeah, but should not be acceptable. Absolutely. Now it's becoming a lot more difficult to hide these atrocities because it gets plastered everywhere right so media is not the only ones getting their hands on information in real time we also have the ability to to share news as we witness it right, right? because this is not new it's been happening it's just not, now it's being televised now it's right. being actually being shown to the world so everybody's like oh my god can't believe this no america and all the world basically has been like this it's just that we haven't been you know, showing it. They haven't been televised, hasn't been recorded right. to show. Um, but also like I I I know I bring up I give Netflix way too much business. <laughs> I don't mean to. They should sponsor us. <laughs> but the reason I bring it up is um I as an actor, the way that I relate to the world is through through arts. 
right? Through the works I see. Obviously, I watch the news. Obviously, I have conversations. Um, and because Shubi says reading is essential, I'm going to start reading more, more than just articles. Because, she, you know, she says it all the time. But more than that, I do watch a lot of documentaries and things like that. And so that's how I can associate to things. That's how it resonates with me. You know, during our um, episode on pronouns, I spoke about the Danish girl and I spoke about the Marsha P. Johnson documentary. But also there's this phenomenal comedian named um, Hannah Gatsby. And she has two specials on Netflix right now. One is called Oh my goodness, Douglas. Douglas was my favorite one. Um, but the first one that she released was called Nanette. And there's a lot of argument whether it was actually a comedy special or not. I loved it just because it was very intense, very real and very raw. And she used her platform to share little known aspects of um, the gay experience from an Australian perspective. You know? That's interesting. We're American. So we know what happened here in the States, but she's from Tasmania and it was illegal to next level, like laws being passed. She had to flee her own uh, home once she realized that she couldn't, she could no longer not live her truth. She had to flee her own home um, to be able to live her life and, and love as she wanted. So, and it's also not exclusive to the US. It's not exclusive to Australia. It's a worldwide thing. And to see that different communities are becoming more aware of it, you know, in the interview with Aniel, uh, we saw how he talked about how there's rarely resources in Brazil for the trans community. You know, so it's important to raise awareness. And for those who have more privilege or have more opportunity to share their voice, to use it to to provide uh, information to others and resources to those who are going through these difficulties, either either journeys of self-discovery or or discrimination, have fun to find help. And that is crazy to think that, well, not crazy, because obviously we, we don't live in a bubble, at least we don't, that everywhere else is just equally as bad or worse or i was gonna say or words but it's like yeah. i mean comparing this is worse this is worse to someone else and that's worse mm -hmm. to them so to me but yeah i and I, I did want to bring up mm. i debated and I, I was like i should have talked to you about this before but it's no filters no fears so i can say it <laughs> uh, that's the point <laughs> somebody wrote to me through my instagram very upset um about why we were just talking about stonewall today and just the lgbtq community right now when everything is happening uh in the black lives matter movement etc i need to take a step back and not get ratchet with them <laughs> you know um because the thing is, I'm, we're not trying to highlight anyone more than the other for the podcast. That's why they're by episodes, right? Because these are all things that are insanely meaningful to both of us and that we talk about constantly in our conversations. You know, um, it doesn't make Black Lives Matter any less important to either one of us. It doesn't make um, human trafficking and the horrendous things that every day are happening in, in, in that atmosphere, any less important to us. Um, but it was important to acknowledge and celebrate um, during Pride Month, these changes, because it gives hope to every movement right now that is fine, like is making new leeways and, and wanting to see changes happen. Um, the LGBTQ community didn't have a voice, had zero voice, zero representation, um, really, at a, at a mass level, at a global level, after Stonewall, that started changing. So 
right now, bring it up, hashtag global consciousness about so many things. I couldn't get mad at that person for writing that to me because at least it meant they were aware that there was something really important going on that needed to be talked about. So I couldn't get mad. But sure. don't judge and don't hate. We're going to get around to all of the things. Right. And we talk uh, about all the things in every episode regardless. <laughs> it's just like when you took a step back and and because we know why we're doing this, this particular yeah. episode today. Yeah. But that person also should take a step back and wonder why. What can I le- just like everybody's saying, listening, learning. What can I learn from this? I can help whatever. And, and, and again, like you said, the Stonewall riots didn't just include, include everybody, black, transgender, um, you know, drag queens, like Hispanics, you name it. It was also all of them. So it was everybody. And the thing is, every movement, every cause is not, may not speak to you, may not resonate with you. You know, you may empathize with it. You may support it in the sense that you, you know it's the right thing you know for that change happen but it's not like it doesn't speak to you to like be super vocal about it i mean you do you boo boo um but it's fair to bring up all of the things so that if there is something that you feel you can add you know add your voice in a positive way in in a way that can be of influence then you do so so i mean that's why that's why we're here <laughs> I mean, we we are like our little grain of sand, our little grain of salt in the big pot of all the things. And like you always say, we're not what the therapist. What? what? Oh, I am not a therapist. <laughs> we are not, but but we're not. We're just giving our two, like you said, grain of salt, two cents, one penny, whatever you want to call it. We're just. I get five cents. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> we are just wanting for people to think about these things. You probably never thought about the Stonewall before and now you're sitting here like, wow. I and we want that. you to disagree with us or to agree with us and give us even more knowledge. That's why right. we tell you, talk to us. Well, something we didn't know or didn't mention or something that we could improve on, that like more knowledge is the best. And but- very important to know that we don't just come on here and like spit fuego por gusto. Like, you you look things up. We have our meetings. Our meetings are anywhere between thirty minutes to three hours. <laughs> yeah, and, and we talk and we research, and because it's important to us to come from a place of knowledge, not just a place of being upset. And we also talk to a lot of our our friends, colleagues, professionals that have a good understanding, not just of the communities that we may be discussing, but also the, the circumstances, the situations we're discussing. Like we pulled out the stage, the, you know, the cycles of change that didn't come from me or just Google that came from an actual uh, therapist with a okay. master's. <laughs> okay. And, and, and that's the thing that we're trying to share with you guys, that we are also gaining knowledge. Every day we learn something new. Every day that we do this, and this podcast is not because the pandemic is happening outside. This this podcast is for something that I personally, as you guys know from episode one, I've been wanting to do forever. And I got someone that was willing in, in the same wavelength as I am to talk about these things. So this is important for us. This is something we want to share with you guys and just every topic everything even about plants whatever the topic may be i'm sure that'll definitely be a topic (laughs) we have we have to no but seriously we're gonna research here we're gonna go and and sit there and have headaches because we're reading so much about it now pulling it out of our booty and that's why right that's why right now you have two links to go look at stonewall museum and the glitz inc and if we find more at the end, yes, I, we I, want will, to share with you. Ooh, I will post it up and I will share with you guys and we we will keep sharing, you know, and <laughs> Peter, I love Peter. Can't convince me you're not anymore. Five episodes each gave advice. I get my free hourly session. <laughs> well, we're not licensed therapists then, but I guess. I mean. If you're getting something from it, wonderful. I know that uh, the last two episodes, actually, 
that you guys have been very active in the chats and talking with us and, and sharing your opinions and your views, maybe not even questions. I know that I've gained some insight in a different, um, like the, the, the episode about children. I don't have a child yet. You know, I have cousins, I'm a teacher, so I've had over a hundred kids <laughs> that are mine, but I get to give them back, you know. <laughs> um, I'm an aunt and Chuby's an aunt, so, but we're not mothers. So it was beautiful to have the perspective of parents in the chat, you know, or, or people with siblings, younger siblings that they are heavily responsible for. And the pronoun episode was spectacular. Our, Oops, we had a two-hour podcast. <laughs> Turned out to be a good one, right, guys? Yeah. I mean, here we are. It's, you know, 8 o'clock, and it, it happened. So I, you know? Yeah. The, our time changed. We're on a better platform. And also, please let us know, is this platform helping? It's only going to get better, better, better. We're working on it. Look, look, I got fancy contraptions now because I'm usually the problem child in this situation. And guys, remember, we're only doing this through the live stream because we're not able to be in the same room together because of the pandemic, but we had big, we had big plans. We still have big plans for the podcast mm -hmm. to be what it needs to be. But for now, thank you for, you know, dealing with us in our four episodes of headaches of, you know, technology issues because my God. Um, well, just since like we're round, like, it's coming close to the end of the podcast. My little cat's running around like a crazy lady. Um, let's, if, I want to do two things. First, tell us something that you remember from today's podcast historically about the Stonewall uprising, the Stonewall riots. Uh, it's fun to watch each time. I'm so glad you enjoy it, Peter. So something that you remember that now when you talk to people, you'll be able to say, hey, but did you know that the Stonewall riots, this happened? Or it happened because these things were happening. Like a fun fact from Snapple Caps, you know, like, <laughs> you know? Snapple Caps had fun facts? I didn't know that. I Did remember I Snapple Caps away with my age. Yeah, man. I used to open those things and they were like, Did you know? It's like, fun fact, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, Okay, thank you. Yeah, they did. Like popsicle. I only remember jokes on popsicle sticks. Wow, we we are going way back. We're going way. Oh, okay, I'm I'm gonna need to stop you right there. Thank you very much. <laughs> I there remember jokes on popsicle pops. English word, popsicle sticks. <laughs> I speak English. I promise. Oh, so Lord. Peter says, see, even our hosts learn new things. Oh yes. Oh, yes. I mean, we're always learning, but that, is that what you learned from today? And you could say fun fact? Either that or I would like for somebody since, you know, tomorrow is the last day of the month. Um, Pride is not just a month. It should be all the time. Celebrate those in your life, whatever their oh, support, orientation, gender, whatever. But for, the, for Pride, if you could put the name of one, two, three, however many people you want, but put someone's name that you want to celebrate uh, during Pride. If it's your friend, if it's your sibling, if it's your son, daughter, whatever, uh, you know, that you want to celebrate them so we can show them love, <laughs> you know? But definitely let us know something that you learned from today. Because I know I learned a lot. I learned a lot. And <laughs> it's fun because uh, for me, I learned about some snow, Stonewall um, riots like a couple of years ago, but you know it's like a, como se dice, like a like a light read, and then you just like yeah. And then when I got into depth of like each person that was there and the and who was part of it and and the interviews with the police officers that were actually there and and all of that and how it happened, I was like. Mm -hmm. I should have stayed here reading it instead of just yeah. doing the libraries because then years ago it would have been more impactful. I mean, I knew about it in the sense that I knew Stonewall was a thing. I knew that, but I didn't even know about the rights. I just knew that Stonewall was a thing. Stonewall was a place. I, I don't need. I don't feel embarrassed to share this because it, it's, it goes to show that you can be a very educated person and not know things. <laughs> <laughs> because it's because it's just how it is. You educate, but you don't know everything. You don't. Um, 
I learned officially about Stonewall, everything it was, and why it came, why the riots happened, and what the riots were last year. Because I need, like, re really, because I needed to research it as an actor. I refused to not do the research from sure. my characters and who they are, you know. And I'm, I'm so glad I did. Like por arribita, like you said. Superficially, I knew what it was, and I knew it made a big difference, but I did not know. And going in depth, and not only going in depth, but having to do the monologues that were words of the people that lived it, that were there, that were part of the rights, that were part of the fight, fighting, and that were beaten. And, you know, that was the first time I actually knew what, what it was. And it made me um that much more aware and appreciative of um of a struggle and a reality that i did not understand and now that we know about it the next 50 years will be more celebrated now that we actually know the meaning of pride and why they're celebrating and you know instead of oh my god there they go again throwing themselves like a huge party no that's not the point that's mm -hmm. not it that's actually not and more than that i think it's important because maybe 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 that comment is not entirely um incorrect in the sense that i feel like a lot of the younger generations may not know where pride began right they know that it's to celebrate you know not just una pachanga but they know that it's to celebrate uh the lgbtq community and um awareness and visibility but i don't think they know the full history so it is important to go back and and look at why we celebrate certain things Right, Ju Juneteenth. Juneteenth just happened. Juneteenth, and so many people did not know the history of Juneteenth. And I didn't really know the details of it. And when I looked, I was like, "Wow!" And, and that's another thing now that we've learned, you know. So yeah, that was to figure out. And that goes for anything um, in our traditions, culturally, like family trees. Where do certain things derive from? Where do we come from? We're losing a lot of that in the newer generations. And I, you can't figure out where the hell you're going if you don't know where you've been. That is or where true. other people have been. And we didn't just show up here. Other people came before us and fought a whole hell of a lot harder than we have had to. So and that's the thing that sometimes like gets me mad, I could say, because people think that, oh, like for example, the voting. I'm gonna bring it up right now because it's a perfect example. It. <laughs> it's a perfect example because as you know, the suffragettes fought for us to have the rights for us women to vote. The younger generation now and the generation, whatever generation we're in, millennials, whatever, they're like, no, I don't need to vote. It's I don't need to, it's yeah. not important. But then I and then that's but they're speaking from ignorance because they do not know. And if they do know, they just don't care about the history of how we got to have that. Yeah. And it's like, but I guess, like you said, it just goes with everything with learning. We, we got to yeah. learn, learn about it before you decide that you don't want to do it. <laughs> exactly. And you know what I was going to do it because you know why you don't want to do it. Not just because ah, when. <laughs> You know that um, last year in August, around that time, four states um, are now required to teach the LGBTQ history. That I is not, awesome. I do not know this. It's starting. It was supposed to start this year. I hope don't so. Know. We don't, I don't know that, but that was the something that they were gonna think about of mm -hmm. like actually doing. And I think it's important because this generation is so young and they're to me personally i think they're maturing quite fast and their feelings and this and teaching that in school i believe that it will at least help them yeah. i think that's awesome that lost. we literally have like 30 seconds left i think do we our this timer is at 59:32 where but this is this is facebook it doesn't give us a timer remember it doesn't 
<laughs> Remember, this is a long. I, I I get nervous. I have Instagram traumatizations. We are traumatized for from that. Uh, but Daniel said that he learned a lot about Stonewall in general, especially from the videos that we posted earlier. That's awesome. I'm glad. Well, thank you for looking at our content. We actually share it with good intent, obviously, to yeah. educate and to let people know, obviously, mm -hmm. what our next subject is about. And guys, feel free to share content, uh, you know, quotes, links, videos with us. Of, and it doesn't just have to be about the topic we just talked about or previous topics. You can about those things. We love learning about it. But it could also be about things that are important to you, uh, things that you feel um, maybe need a platform. And if it resonates with us, we absolutely, you know, we're in episode five. <laughs> That's <laughs> it. There's a ways to go, baby. So many ways. <laughs> um, but going back to what you're saying about the education, I think that's amazing. That there, that what did you say? Four states? About four states, yeah. And when I first read that, I I thought I was like reading wrong because we didn't grow up with that in our school. You know, some schools didn't even have an LGBTQ program where young adults, you know that identified could go to, at least my school didn't, you know, mm -hmm. in high school. So now having that, and if you're a lost child in that aspect and you're like, oh my God, is this wrong? Is this right? I don't know what to do. Like what's going on? You could go there now. It, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. but counselors in my high school did not help. No. I don't know about you. <laughs> yeah, not I, in my high school either. <laughs> yeah, I had teachers that were more helpful, no. you know, in our school system but yeah i think it's it's a good thing i will give you guys an update on that i'm gonna read up on it again and see what's going on with that and i'll make a short clip after this because i'm also glad that for the younger generation there's a lot more support specifically in schools if they are you know um going through that inner struggle of like i'm gay i i'm whatever and they have no one to talk to no one to go see right and they and at home maybe they don't they don't know how it'll be received and i'm really glad that they have you know more resources to go to for support and for information to learn about themselves i, I kind of feel terrible that we take away some power so much power from our teachers sometimes um as a teacher i've had students who have those feelings and they don't know really what to say to their parents or their family or what to do with those feelings and it's difficult because I have to respect the wishes of like I, the parents I have to respect that boundary but I also don't want my students to feel so alone and so um uh, the thing is that the words that they use are, is what sticks out of my brain and I remember one of my students saying what's wrong with me and that really hurt me because I'm like, I just, you want to tell, and, and I did say there's nothing wrong with you because there, obviously there's nothing wrong with them, but you don't know what they're going to get on, on the other side of it. And you know that you can't be there to just like protect them. So, um, but to know that if I had the support of, you know, a bigger organization, but I, I teach, you know, private acting lessons and I was teaching in, in a, an academy. So it's, it's not like I could really turn to too many people and be like, listen, this is happening. So I I ended up having to go myself to speak to other teachers to see, what do you do? What do you do? Because I, I wanna be a good resource for my students to, to go to if they need to feel safe. But I also want their parents to not feel um, undermine, undermined that's not a word, is it? I, I, I want, because like we discussed two episodes ago, you know, things, a lot of things start at home and parents, you got to give them a lot of credit. They put up with a lot of stuff. So sometimes it's not, not wanting to teach them the right thing. They just, it's scary. They want to protect the kids. So like, I don't want to undermine ever a parent's um, impetus to protect their child, but I, I want to be able to approach it in a way that they feel that they, that they can handle it without also hurting my student or, uh, you know, jeopardizing that trust that they put in me. So that's always difficult. 
And like I said, I'm not a therapist, so sometimes it's not easy. <laughs> It's going to be interesting to see the school systems in a couple of years and how they imp implemented all these things, like they said, you know, about the LGBTQ and like more counselors with more experiences and actually teachers having, yeah, I get it, you're my math teacher, but can if they see that this kid mm -hmm. is coming to them, if they could guide them to someone better, someone, not better, but someone that could help them in that, whatever the problem is, mm -hmm. like that would be, and sometimes teachers can be such a wonderful liaison between, mm -hmm. you know, families, at, at, like the child and the family and the, the parents, you know, because it's kind of like a neutral ground. Um, if, you, if you have that good teacher, like you saw that last episode that we did as we were signing off, one of my teachers came out and I was like, <gasps> I have to stop the world. I have to mention her. There are teachers that make an impact in your life that really help you find things about your, uh, discover things about yourself, about your abilities, about your talents, that makes a difference in your self-esteem and in the way that you express yourself. So I'll give it, oh look, that's a great episode. Teachers. I, I we will have one on that. <laughs> I also have one, I do have a couple of teachers that were not really my teachers in high school, but they were still my teachers, mm -hmm. that they taught me a lot and they're to this day great friends. You know, now that you graduate, you could become friends with your teachers, you know, mm -hmm. that's an awesome, you know? And, but that's what we need. Like, yeah, again, you're my teacher, but but some people just trust in them. Now this, you know, the Stonewall episode. No. <laughs> well, no, I mean, we said it's gonna start it's going to start at Stonewall. We talked about the history. We talked about why Stonewall happened. That it wasn't just somebody woke up one morning and said, I'm going to take off my shoe and hit a cup. Right. You know, it was like there was consistent ab abuse and persecution. And that day was just enough. And the riots happened. And change thereafter happened and now we're moving along you you this conversation came <laughs> from knowing now that this is going to be taught in schools i wanted to share that with everybody because it's an interesting thing to know you know that this might be a possibility you know or that they already did implement it but now i wonder how the the, the parents are gonna react to this. And like you said in the a couple of episodes ago, it starts at home, how would they react to that? Well, I mean, history is history. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the LGBTQ community is just as part of, ah, uh, man, I'm gonna just call her therapist Helen from now on, said this to me the other day, we were, we were talking about a post or whatever, and it resonated with me that I need to reiterate it. The LGBTQ community is a part of the, the American, you know, societal fabric, right? And the same way that uh, Latinos are a part of that fabric, the same way that, um, you know, Black Americans are part of that, the same way that Asian Americans, the same way that all people who have immigrated to this country have added to that fabric. You know, it is part of our history. Every time something happens in our society, it's part of our history. So it should be taught because that's how that's how ignorance keeps moving on. You just don't know. <laughs> you just don't know. So it's not important to you. It's not relevant to you. But if we make all of these different communities relevant, because they are, you know, and, and we teach all of the histories that adds to the history of our country, then I don't think it's going to be so weird 20 years from now to be hearing about these things. Well, to me, we'll be like, wow, I didn't have this in school. I didn't have that in school. I didn't have that in school. But, but and for me, it's like kids spend more time at school as well than they do at home. So it's like, come on. At least they're learning good stuff, man. <laughs> Right, so give them something that's worth of value, something that they can actually take home and say, oh my goodness. Because when I went to school, I was, history used to be my thing. Like mm -hmm. I used to love- about It wasn't mine, but my mom is a big history buff. 
history, history, history buff. She was always telling me the importance about. I'm looking at her right now. She always told me the importance of history. And I'm like, hey, no quiero. And then I chose a profession that requires me <laughs> to learn about the history of the, within the play, within the movie. And I was like, damn, she was right. <laughs> And for me as a writer, I usually have to, you know, depending on the topic and like, you know, like that one particular one that I send you that voice note of, which I'll be oh, sharing yeah. with you guys later, not now. Um, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. That just based on what happened, you know, with with George Floyd, um, that and the other history about, you know, how I came to that poem, I had to read. I had to do a lot of research and it's just, I mean, yeah, I'm a creative writer, but sometimes poems do not come because what if I want to write about a particular thing, but it just doesn't come to me? But That's creativity is ignited by knowledge. It, <laughs> every, exactly. every artist is usually told if like, for example, when I was in school and I'm sure you've heard this as a writer a thousand and five times, you know, write what you know, do what you know, perform mm -hmm. what you know. And it go from a place that you know. Um, you know what I'm saying? You can't. De lo nada still comes from something. Right. Exactly. Guys, you well, everybody's very quiet today. <laughs> yeah. There was an echo there for a sec. I just said uh, we know. Oh, okay. Well, guys, I hope you guys learned something from today's episode. You know, we tried our best to bring you knowledge. And, and it was a bit more serious than other episodes, but it was necessary. They're not always going to be rainbows and glitters, guys. <laughs> no pun intended, but yes. Oh, <laughs> yeah, no pun intended. <laughs> leave it to me. <sighs> Yes, leave us in the comments whatever other topics in the future you guys think will be, you know, a good one. Not even a good one, but just one in general, just one to talk about. And we'll, we'll be letting you know what the next topic is soon. Uh, there'll be more interviews and such. And this is the platform. This is it. This is it. Oh, hallelujah. Let us know if you guys like this one better because I sure do. I feel like yes. I'm talking to no one, no offense, because I just, the way that I see it, I can't, I don't know. Yeah. So I, I feel like, like please let us know, like, give us feedback on this because it took us a while to find this streaming thing and connect it to Facebook. And so far, it's been the least glitchy. I know we had a little baby issue. It's a little one. It was a hiccup, but for the most part, that we're solid. <laughs> I think this one is it. You're the winner. Guys, uh, stay informed, stay educated, keep loving, happy pride. Um, please leave us comments. Check out stonewallmuseum.org and the Glitz uh, Incorporation organization. Go check them out. Thank you so much. Chubi, what do you want to say? Reading is essential. <laughs> and I am going to get a tattoo to my... Yeah, I have my own hashtags. Hashtag reading is essential is Chewy's. It, it is. I mean, come on, guys. If you know anything about reading, you, when you read something, you gain knowledge. And yes, happy pride. Love one another. Respect one another. I think I mentioned in another episode something that I really love about, I guess, like rave culture is plur. So it's... Yeah. Pink love, uh, unity. I'm saying this all out of order. Peace, love, unity, respect. I me faltaba respect. I was like, respect. Yes. I was saying the word. Pay, pay, pay. And so, remember that just because someone else's opinion is different from yours doesn't mean that they're wrong and doesn't mean that you're wrong or right either. It just means that it's different and we can respect, respect it. Yes. And if somebody changes their mind about something, you know, from one perspective to another in a positive way. Don't hate on them. Don't call them a hypocrite. That's called growing Growth. and welcomed. Growth is always welcome, should be celebrated. Always. Don't hate. No. <laughs> All right, yeah, guys. The plur life, yes. Yes, plur life. Right. I wish, you know that they do that. You can do it through like, they've been doing it virtually when they have like these, they have so many DJs now doing like virtual shows and like the virtual, and they do it through like the camera. They do peace, <laughs> love, 
unity, respect is so cute. Hi, so I do that to all of you right now. Yeah. <laughs> I swear to you, <laughs> all of you. If I knew, I swear to too, Chubby. <laughs> Have a good night, everyone. Guys, ah, stay fearless, amores.